I've got a heat transfer type video for you today. We're going to be taking a look at the TLC14 computer fan. It'll transfer the heat away from your hot components. That was a joke. Anyways, a little bit of comparison as to where it ranks among other uh, 140 millimeter class fans, as well as ones that are also by Thermorite. So we have the cooler testing up there. Then in the middle, we have the case simulation test with its rank at time of filming this video for most recent um, performance or rankings, I do ask that you refer to my, uh, what are they called? Best of videos. There should be one from August or one from December-ish, depending on when this video goes live. I'm not entirely sure by now when it'll go live. A little bit of performance uh, or spec information. Bearing type, fluid dynamic bearing, pretty standard, 1,500 RPM. There's its airflow, static pressure, noise. Before we get into the data, I would like to thank Mint Mobile for being today's video partner. Thanks to Mint Mobile's wireless plans, it is possible to not only switch away from big, expensive mobile companies, but to also have a quality, affordable plan for me and my family. Mint Mobile's premium wireless plan starts at just $15 a month for a three-month plan. I can get high-speed data and unlimited talk and text on the nation's largest 5G network. I can bring my own phone along and my current phone number so you don't need to memorize a new phone number, something I have always found difficult. Switching to Mint is super easy thanks to digital eSIM cards, which most phones have. You can sign up and activate immediately right from your own phone from the comfort of your own home. If your phone doesn't have a digital eSIM card, Mint will ship you a new SIM card free of charge. And right now, new customers, Mint Mobile is offering 50% off their first 12 months of unlimited plan. It's the best deal of the year and only available a limited time. If you're interested in learning more about Mint Mobile and switching, visit my link or by clicking the link in the video description down below. First series of tests is my case simulation test, taking a four key da data point locations. The sixes mark, the first one, is represented by a small form factor case, front to back airflow, assuming an air cooler type design, uh, mini ITX board altogether. Uh, length would be approximately of a 120 millimeter class fan, as I would put it. It's also represented by a short throw distance. So that's air going from the bottom of your case, blowing up towards your GPU. The six inch mark would be very representative of that data point. Then we have the nine inch mark. It's representative by a compact tower think a case that can hold a standard ATX motherboard, but not a lot of extra room there around it. So it'd be overall very compact. I put it as a case that can hold 220 millimeter class fans, not a extra room around it. Again, front to back airflow, air cooled type design. Then we have the 11 inch mark, your standard mid towers. It'd be able to hold 320 millimeter class fans or a standard uh, 360 AIO. Then we have at the 14 inch fire mark, truly large towers, something that can hold 340 millimeter class fans. So you want to pay attention to the data point that best suits the computer or the computer case that you plan on actually uh, using so that you pay attention to which fans are going to perform best in those type of scenarios. Then we need something to compare against. I have a control fan. It is based three parts A12X5 to one part A14, just as a baseline comparison point. The TLC14 performs slightly underneath the control fan at most data points. Now at the six mark, it's not nearly as good as my control fan. But that data point, while important, can be more ignored than some of the other ones. At the 9, 11, and 14.5, it's performing incredibly close, so it's a great result. At 100% PWM fan signaling, the C14 outperforms my control fan, despite my control fan. Again, it's kind of a blended 130 millimeter class fan, idealized type scenario. It's outperforming it at most of the data points, so that is a great result for uh, the TLC14. Comparing it to other fans, uh, this TLC14 is sitting in the middle of the pack. There are fans that perform better than it, there are fans that perform worse than it in this noise normal result. So overall I call it uh, quite good, but maybe not uh, exemplary, so it's definitely worth considering. 
moving things up to 100% PW fan signaling. And once again, the C14 is sitting in the middle of the pack. It is a good result. Again, not quite exemplary, but certainly quite good. And if we're comparing against other fans that are spinning at similar RPMs, it's right in line with where it should be. Noise levels also at 100%. Um, not particularly bad compared to the other fans listed on this graph. So it wouldn't be too crazy noisy. Um, but that would be a decision kind of for you to make. Uh, but it's, I would say it's doing really well. Noise versus air speed. So noise is horizontal, air speed is vertical. Noise is in decibels. Every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. So going from 10 to 20 decibels would make it twice as loud. And the C14 is once again at this nine inch mark sitting right in the middle of the pack. It's a good place to be. Um, if you're really noise sensitive, you do want to pick the fans that are shifted higher. If you're not as noise sensitive or more on a budget, picking middle of the road is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And depending on what com PC components you're actually selecting for your build, uh, you may not need those extra top performing ones to, to flush out the air in your case. A average fan would be perfectly adequate and there's nothing wrong with it. Now we're on to performance through my CPU U, CPU Air Cooler. It's the Noctua U12A. Thanks to viewers like you and my Patreon and YouTube supporters, I was able to recently purchase a radiator. I've just started to roll in testing and gathering the data. And so far the data is indicating that air speed going through the radiator is very similar to that of the air speed of the air going through the Noctua U12A, so I can call that differential equivalent. I'm not calling the performance that you get from radiator versus in the air cooler the same. I'm calling the resistance of that air to go through it the same. So with all of that said, uh, if you would like to help support this channel, you like what I'm the idea of what I'm doing, would like to see it grow because I do want to add thermal testing to it. I just can't afford to buy some test systems yet. Uh, think about joining me as a Patreon or YouTube member, but let's get back to the regular program. So the first graph here, we have meters per second versus RPM. This is basically a blade efficiency graph. Um, optimizing for how much air speed you get for an RPM. And the C14 outperforms my control fan a little bit, so that means its blade design is actually very effective at moving air. On the right graph here, we have airspeed versus noise. This is how noisy it is to push that air. Here, it's not quite as efficient as my control fan, just not as well optimized, so it's a little bit on the noisy side. Um, up to you to decide if it's too bad, basically. So how does it compare against other fans? Well, interestingly, it performs near on equivalent in noise normalized testing to the TLB14 which is pretty cool, um, but it's sitting right there in the middle of the pack. There are fans that are significantly better than it. There are fans that are significantly worse than it. So overall, middle of the pack, imperfectly adequate. At 100% PW fan ceiling, it's shifted to a little bit above average, but still close to that average mark, as I would put it. So um, again, a good result, but maybe not a stellar result. Um, kind of up to you to decide with regard to that. It does outperform the TLB14 here with a very similar RPM, although it is a little bit noisier, but you do get a little bit more air speed out of it. So once again, up to you to decide where you want to spend your money and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, air speed versus that decibel rating. Again, it's sitting in the middle of the pack. It's sitting right here in this nice grouping of fans. I didn't notice any significant harmonics in it, although you do see this little bit of a weave pattern in the design, which does indicate that there could be some harmonics in it, just in the 
way I'm currently doing testing. Again, I want to overhaul all of it and do improvements as this channel grows. So where instead of doing every 10 10% uh, pedo infant signal, I'd shift that to every five to see if there were harmonics. The Silent Wings 4 Pro, I tested at every five PW fan signal. It takes twice as long to do the testing. But you can see I found more harmonic frequencies in it, or they're also called resonance frequencies. So there could be some in the C14. I just didn't particularly find them. And listening with my ear as I would adjust the PW fan signal, again, I didn't really uh, find them in that way. Now we're on to CFM testing. CFM testing is pretty basic. You have a fan, you have a tube, you'll blow air down the tube, you take the air measurement at the end, and you know the circumference, so you know the volumetric flow rate. And ignores the fact that fans don't blow air in a perfectly cylindrical fashion so that uh, air actually tends to spread out. So it's not telling you the whole picture about how these fans actually operate. But little rant aside, meters per second versus RPM, they perform near and identically no surprise. Decibels versus airspeed? Well, here they perform neuron identically once again as well. And the control fan here is just the NFA14 because the testing here is a little bit different than um, the other tests. How does it compare against other fans? Noise normalized a little bit below the mid tier, the middle of the, the pack. Still not a terrible place to be, but. Um, there are ones that are potentially better, and we'll have to see value proposition to see at its particular price point. At 100% PW fan signaling, it's above that midpoint, but still kind of in what I call that middle tier of fans. Again, overall, not a bad place for it to sit, so it could be worth considering. Uh, CFM versus decibels. Again, it sits right in line with the other fans that uh, I've selected that I consider to be quite good. So it's a good result. Now on to value proposition. At the six inch mark, noise normalized and at 100%, well, it's a very good value for a 140 millimeter class fan, but for best value fans, the 120s tend to hit that a little bit better just because there seem to be less 140s on the market so they don't aren't produced in quite the quantities. But at $9.30, as I could find its pricing currently on Amazon, it is an excellent value for the size and at 100%. And for the 11 inch mark, so more average size cases, again, it is a great value. And just in case I didn't mention it, value is performance per dollar. It is not actual performance. If you have certain cooling requirements, you want to look at the performance data. If you're on a budget and trying to fill out your case, Performance per dollar is where you want to pay attention. CFM testing, well, the C14 just crushes all the other fans in this category, so it is an excellent value here. Uh, beating out the Pure Wings 340, which I actually particularly liked in my testing. And when took at performance of the CPU air cooler, it is once again one of the top values. If you don't have particularly high uh, performance needs for that cooler, because you have a bit more of an average CPU, you're doing a fan swap, a fan, uh, the cooler fan died, and you have one of these fans sitting in your case, it'll do the job just fine. So overall, I like the performance of this fan. And as a side note, uh, I know a lot of people have been making their at-home air filters using standard PC fans. This is a fan that I'd actually look at using for that type of situation. That's how impressed I am with it. Um, here's the raw data. The raw data does belong to me. If you wish to use it for your own personal use, you may go ahead and do so. If you want to use it for any sort of monetary reasons, publications, journals, whatever, I do ask that you reference me and my channel because I'm the one who generated the data. It takes me around uh, almost two weeks to go from start to uh, published video on YouTube to do the testing and video editing and data manipulation and all of that fun stuff because I'm just a one person show. It, so again, if you like what I'm doing and would like to see this channel grow, be able to do more types of testing, uh, please think about joining me as a YouTube member or Patreon. The two upper tiers of those uh, now have access to my raw data. You do need to request access to the data because it's not 
automated at this time. It just can't figure out how to make it do that. But you have, have access to the uh, a copy of the Excel data. Um, if you have fans that you'd like me to test in the future, I'll try to get around to testing it. Again, like I said, I'm a one-person show, so I have a backlog of videos and just started doing testing again. I test for about six months and try to cram them all into the winter months because AC units are very noisy. So during the summer, just kind of, I fill out the, the backlog. So with that all said, thank you very much for watching Computer Tech and More. I hope to see you next time and have a good one.